So today's is so to Daf Chav Zayin, so to twenty-seven. And we're going to study in the memory and the merit of all those who were who were killed, who died, Al Kiddush Hashem, in service to the land of Israel on this Yom Hazikaron. So the last line of twenty-six B states, Amr Shmuel. Yisa Adam Duma, now on top of 27a, he says a person should marry a Duma. Who's a Duma? So Rashi says, this is somebody who speaks with a lot of people. Uh, everybody's saying that she is adulterous. And that's how Rabbeinu Tam says, Adam Shimizana. That people say that there are a lot of rumors, strong rumors that this woman is adulterous. So Shmuel says, you're better off marrying this Duma, the Ayisa Bas Duma, before you marry the daughter of such a Duma. She Zuba Mitipa Kishera, the Zuba Mitipa Psua. Because the Duma herself is the woman herself, she's coming from a Tipa Kishera. I mean, to say her father and mother, there's no questions about them. So we know she's a full Jew. Whereas this other woman, the daughter of the Duma, is coming from a Tipa Psua. We don't know, since her mother, there's a lot of rumors about her, maybe she was with an idolater or with a mamzer. And so therefore, therefore, Shmuel says, you're better off with the Duma than with the daughter, or marrying the Duma than the daughter of the Duma. Whereas Rabbi Yochanan says, Yisa Adam, Bas Duma, Al Yisa Duma. Rabbi Yohanan says just the opposite. A person is better off marrying the daughter of the Duma rather than the Duma herself. Shezu Omedes Becheskes Kashrus, because the daughter of the Duma, we're going to assume, is in a presumption of kosher. She's allowed to be married, and we're not going to be concerned that. She came from a, a disqualified father because we have the principle, as we're going to say later on, on this stuff, Rov most of the most of the Bia would have been with the husband and now with the adulterer. So therefore we could assume that the that her father was her mother's husband. Whereas the Duma herself is not going to be in the Cheskas Kasha, is not going to have the presumption of being. Okay, because if she was adulterous while well, she was married to her husband, even one time, she'll become prohibited to him. And therefore, so therefore, he shouldn't remain married to her and she would become a halala and she would, and she therefore, she would not be permitted to marry a Kohen either. So a person is better, better to be married to, uh, Rabbi Yohan says, to the daughter of the Duma, Rather than to the Duma herself. The Gemara challenges Rabbi Yochanan, Mesvei, no say Adam Duma. It says in the Bryce, so you, you should marry the Duma before the Bas Duma. It doesn't mention the Bas Duma there. So doesn't this prove like Rabbi, like Shmuel that you're better off marrying the Duma than the Bas Duma? So I'm a rabbi of a tizbra. Do you think it's really that that's really the way to read the brayso? No, say lechatzila. Is anybody saying I'm telling you that this is the ideal wife for the duma? It means ela im nasa. Means if you got married, it's a vow marriage. So tani nami bas duma. So therefore, add in the bas duma as well. You could say no, say adam bas duma, not duma. Mehilchas and how do we? And the gemara says, what's the rule? He saw them bas duma v'ali said duma. The Gemara rules like Rabbi Yochanan. The stem of the Gemara at the end rules like Rabbi Yochanan that a person should marry the daughter of a duma rather than the duma itself. The Tanya of Tachlifa Bar Marava came to Rabbi Yehuda Isha Mizane Banei Sharing because it proof that you can marry the daughter of a duma because we have this statement. And if a woman is mizana, even if we know for a fact the woman was adulterous. Her offspring are kosher. Why? We say, rov be'ilos because most of the be'ilos, most of the interactions, most of the bia, we assume, follows the husband. Rov be'ilos And so therefore, we assume that the offspring came from the, her mother's husband and not from the adulterer. Bayi Rav Amram, 
Ramam asked the following question. Let's say we know that the that um, the girl's mother was very, very adulterous. She didn't just have once in a while. She was all the time. So maybe we can't apply this principle of Rov Bila Sachar Baal. We can't apply the principle that most of the time she would have been with her husband. So what do we say there? Well, there's a Machogas in Nida. Um, so we know that the Machogas in the Machogas in the Nida. When is a woman most likely to be, uh, when is a woman able to become pregnant? Do we say she becomes pregnant right before she gets her period? Or do we say she becomes pregnant right, before, right after she goes to the mikvah? So according to the position that says that a woman only becomes pregnant right before she gets her period, then we're not even going to have a question because we're going to assume that we cannot rely that the, that the woman's husband is the father. Because he doesn't know when, when she gets her period. And therefore, so he's not able to make sure that that night she's not adulterous. It's only a question. It's only a question according to the position that says a woman only becomes pregnant after her immersion in the mikvah. Do we say there, Mike, even the Yadaba, the Ture, do we say since he knows for a fact that she was uh, going to be, that she just went to the mikvah and therefore that's the time where she could get pregnant. Therefore, a watcher to make sure that she doesn't commit adultery that day. And so therefore, and so therefore we could apply the principle of Rov Be'ilo Sachar Abau and that most likely the woman's husband is the father. Well, Doma, given the fruits of Be'ilo there well, or maybe because she is very, very, uh, adulterous, a uh, very, very um, uh, licentious woman, therefore we're not going to apply this principle. The nurse is taken. We leave this question unresolved. The Mishnah said, these are the people who the Bezdin, who the court warns. The Elisha Bezdin, the Conlan. So the, the court steps in and warns those people, those husbands who are not of sound mind, or if they're not present, like they're captured and put away in prison, then the husband can warn the, their wives not to be secluded with another man. ish, ish, ish. Why does the Pasuk say twice the words man? Ish, ish, ki ishto. A man, a man, if his wife will commit adultery. Why does it say the word ish twice? Rabos, ish, ish, charas, ish, ish, shota, ish, ish, shamum, v'shalach, ba'o, medina, sayam, v'shaya, chavash, babes, asur, and shabes, and mekan, lan, v'pos, on, miksu, vasan. So it's to include these cases, the wife of a chayre, of a, all these people are not of sound mind, the chayre, shota, or the Shemim, or the one whose husband went overseas, or the one whose husband was captured, that the court warns them. And why is the court warning them? Because we're saying, the court's saying that if you're going to be secluded with that man, you're, we're going to say you're going to lose your ksuba. And I might think the court also has the right to force them to drink the bitter waters. Tom Omer, behavi ha'ish as ishto. A man brings his wife, and this is not the man, this is the court. Rabbi Yossi says, Afash Kosa, and the court is also warning her to eventually force her to drink. When, how could she drink the bitter waters? The husband's not bringing her. Yes, I'll tell you how. When the husband gets freed from his prison, he'll be able to force her to drink the bitter waters. But Michael, I forget what's the nature of the dispute between the Rabban and Rabbi Yossi. The Rabbanan Savri Ba'ina and Vikina Vehebi. The Rabbanan say we require, he warned her and he brought her. They require both. Rabbi Yosi Savar, Wo Ba'ina and Vikina Vehebi. The Rabbanan say we don't require both. The Rabbanan say, the, the, the Rabbanan say we require that the one who warned her has to also cause her to drink. It says in the Brahsa Tan Rabana Shartista Isha Tahas Isha that the woman will commit adultery while she's married to her husband. So we had said earlier, Rashi said to Dapam ago that the Gemara is going to mafarish this, this explanation because it says a hakesh ish isha to compare the man to the woman, but isha ish and the woman to the man. So what does that mean? So we're basically circling loop, coming back to the statement that the Gemara said earlier. So Amr Rav Sheish says, "Kishem Sha Im Hu Suma Lo Yamashka Delsev and Ne'ala Me Ne'isha." Just like if he was a blind man, he would not drink the bitter waters, because it says 
isha, that it was missing from the eyes of her husband. So too, if she was blind, she would not drink the bitter waters because we compare the woman to the man. Rabbi Ashi says, just like if she's missing a foot or an arm, she would not drink the bitter waters. As it states, as it states, the Kohen has to stand there up before Hashem, and you place the Mincha on her hand. So too, if he was lame or missing a limb, he doesn't give her a drink. We say, just like if she was unable to speak, she would not drink the bitter waters, because it says, the Amra Isha, Amen, Amen. The woman says, Amen, Amen, I accept, I accept. So, if, so too, if he was mute, he's unable to give her the bitter waters to drink. So we finished the fourth chapter of Arusa, and we now start the fifth chapter, which is Keshem Shamayim, just like the waters. So the Mishnah tells us, Keshem Shamayim, Botkin Osa, Osa, Kachamayim, Botkin Osa. So we say, just like the waters, check her, check her, check this woman, and to see if she was adulterous or not, also the waters check him. And the reason is, it's based upon the Pasuk. The Pasuk says, Uvau, Shanemar, Uvau, Uvau. It says, Uvau, Amayim, 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 These bitter waters will come into your womb to distend your stomach and to make your thighs fall apart. And also it says, the woman drinks the bitter waters in the next Pasuk. Uvau, Ba, Amayim, and the waters come into her. And so it's extra. Why does it say if to Uvau, we say from the fact that it says we're Vau twice, that just like the waters check him, they also check her. Or just like the waters check her, they also check him. The Tosis here cites the Yerushalmi. In the Yerushalmi, it states, Hama'arim. What does that mean? How do we know that the bitter waters, the, the words, Ma'arim, correspond to the 248 limbs that she has? So the, the Rishalmi says the Marim that that hold on that the minion of the of the Marim corresponds to this uh, to the to this idea. That's what the Yerushalmi is saying, that the, the gematria of the Ma'arim corresponds to this concept. Hold on one second. That's, that's what Tosha is citing. The, the word Ma'arim in the gematria is 496, and that corresponds to the 248 limbs that she has, 248, plus 248, that he has equals uh, of Hamarim that equals 496, and which teaches us that that so too so just like it checks her uh, corresponding to each and every time that she sinned, so too they check him. So, 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 say that we learn this out from the Matria. But even though that we, the Gemara is finding scriptural support for this idea, the, the, the scriptural text doesn't explicitly mention anything that, that happens to the man who's being adulterous because. There's no witnesses. And the test in the door is really only a test of the woman. But uh, Chazal expanded it to say that it's a test of the adulterer as well. And so it shows that the Chazal were, were deeply concerned about equity in this process. And what's the source? It says, just like she'll always be prepared to be with her husband if she doesn't drink the bitter waters, 
so too she'll prohibit to be with the person she was adulterous with. As it says, nitma'a vin nitma'a. There is, it could have said nitma'a, but it says vin nitma'a. It teaches this idea. That's the position of Rabbi Akiva. I'm Rabbi Yeshua, Kacha Yadorish, Zechariah ben Akatsav. Rabbi Yeshua says that was the drasha of Rabbi Zechariah ben Akatsav. Rabbi Omer, Shnei Pa'amim Amur in the parasha, Nidma'a and Nidma'a. It says in the parasha, Nidma'a and also Nidma'a, which teaches us Echa Labav, Echa Labav. One is for the husband, one is for the adulterer, that they're pro- both prohibited if she doesn't drink the bitter waters. So Rashi tells us that day, that drasha from Rabbi Akiva took place Bo Bayom. Whenever it says Bo Bayom in the Shas, it refers to the day that Rabbi Lazar ben Azariah took over the Messias for Rabbi Gamliel. He became the Nazi of the Yeshiva in Yamna. And as a consequence, they opened up the, the base medrash and they included many, many more benches in the base medrash. Many, and they expanded all these drashas. Bo Bayom is the day that the base medrash was open to many more people. And all, look at all the Torah that came in. Megamil was so careful, it was only somebody who was Toho Kaboro, that it was, his inside was like his outside. But on this day, where they opened it up, we had so much more Torah. And Bo Bayom Darsh Rabbi Akiva, so on that day Rabbi Akiva expounded. What do we do with the fact that the Prophet says, Kul Charas Asher Yipol Ma'am Al Tocho, Kul Asher B'Tocho Yitma. If you have a pottery utensil, if anything will fall into it, whatever is inside of it will become Tamei. Meaning to say, let's say a pottery utensil, and you have a piece of bread in it, and a, a Sheretz will fall into the Kul Charas, the Kul Charas will become a Rishon Le'Tuma, and if there be a piece, a first degree term, if there be a piece of bread inside, let's say that oven that, that the sherets fell into, that, oven, that bread will become a second degree tumma. And then that second degree tumma will be able to make, if it touches liquid and the liquid is truma, will be able to make it a third degree tumma, according to Rabbi Akiva. So as Rabbi Akiva says, Eno Omer Tamei Al Yitma. It means it can make tamei tamei acher. And we made al kikar sheni shemitames ashlishi. This is a, a second degree tuma. A loaf of bread can make some a liquid third degree tuma. I'm Rabbi Shua. Mi gala efer afar mi enecha Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai. Rabbi Shua was a chaver. Rabbi Akiva said how how I wish that the that the earth will be revealed from the eyes of Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai. Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai was what was no longer alive. But so this is a reference that'll be resurrected. Shayis Omer, because you, Rabbi Yochanan ben Zaka, you were concerned. You said, You were worried that the generations would be, become more lenient and that there'd be a new generation that would say that the third loaf of bread, that the Latar Kikar Shlishi, that if the loaf of bread touched a Shlishi, a third degree tumor, would say it's not Tamei. Shayil Omikra Menator, because there's no explicit verse, Shu Tamei. Or Rabbi Kiva Tamitcha, maybe we'll make from that Torah. Rabbi Kiva, your student, is really your student's student, uh, because Rabbi Kiva was a student of Rabbi Lezer ben Horkinus, was himself a student of Rabbi Yochum ben Zakkai. It's because Rabbi Akiva, your student, he brought a verse from the Torah, Shehu Tamei, that actually the third degree level of Tumah is actually Tamei, because it states, Kol Asher Betocho Yitma, whatever's inside of it will become Tamei. Bo Bayom, that same day, Darash Rabbi Akiva, Omidosam, Yechutz Lair, Espas Kema, Apayim Bama. So that same day, Rabbi Akiva made another drasha. One verse says about the cities of the Levites that 2,000 almost around the city, you have to leave undeveloped, that the fields will be there for the Levites to graze their flocks. And then Umikra Echad Omer, there's another verse that says, Mikir Ayir, from the wall of the city of Chutza. Externally, elafama that you have to leave one thousand amos. So, which is it? Shikvar namar alpayim ama. One verse says two thousand. The Yevshar lomar alpayim ama. You can't say it's two thousand. Shikvar namar elafama. Another verse says one thousand amos. So, what do you do? Akitzad elaf ama migrash alpayim ama tchum shabbos. One thousand amos is the migrash, the field that's undeveloped, and two thousand amos. Or the Tchum Shabbos undeveloped. Rabbi Loz, Rabbi Yezer, Rabbi Nosh, Rabbi Yosef, Rabbi Yosef, Omer, Elf Ama Migrash, Rapayim Ama Sada Sukramim. He says, 1,000 Amos is the field, and 2,000 Amos are the Sada Sukramim, are the 
one thousand, the first thousand amos are for the migrash, are for the flocks, and the uh, the, the second thousand amos are the fields and the vineyards. This is how we know, according to Rabbi Kiva, that tchum is biblical. So this is a this is a discussion. Misachas erevin. Bo'bayom darash that same day. That same day. Darash Rabbi Akiva. That same day, Rabbi Akiva expounded. Az Yashir Moshe of Bnei Yisrael says Shiraz Os Hashem, and Moshe will sing that song to Hashem. Vayomru way more. The words lay more are extra in the Az Yashir. Shein Tam Olamay more. It doesn't need to say lay more. Mat Tam Olamay more. Why does it say the word lay more? Malam Beit Shai Yisrael Omed Shira Acharav Shem Moshe. I'll call Davar V'Davar. Kikorin Asal. This tells us that that the Bnei Yisrael. Would, resp- would recite the Shira on the sea, they would recite the Az Yashir, just like Moshe was responding, like, just like they recite the Ha'ol. The Gemara is going to tell us what that means. Gemara Mefarsh, the Gemara is going to tell us what it means to recite the Shira, just like to recite the Ha'ol. And for this reason, it says, like, Rabbi Nechemya Omer, they were recited like the way the Shema is recited. Again, Rashi tells us the Gemara is going to explain what it means, but it means that they would recite it at the same time. But Rashi says we can wait to understand it. <speaking in Hebrew> that same day, there was another drasha. This was by Rabbi Yoshua ben Horkinus. So Rabbi Yoshua ben Horkinus seems to have been a student of Rabbi Akiva. Because what happened? Look at the Gemara. The Gemara says, What did Rabbi Shubhan Urkana say? He gets up. You can imagine the scene. Everybody's getting up in the base of It doesn't even seem to be like some common theme. They were just opening the Torah. They were just, the floodgates were open that everybody was allowed to give a drasha. So it wasn't just Rabbi Akiva, and it wasn't just Rabbi Yeshua is now here, Rabbi Yeshua ben Horkinus. Now, who gets up and he says, When Job served God, he did it out of love. As it says in the Pasuk, that even if Hashem will kill me, I will not separate from him. I'll, I'll still wait for him. And we see from here that he served Hashem out of love and not just out of fear of punishment because he's saying, I'm waiting for God, even if he's going to punish me. By Daina Davar Shakol, but still the matter wasn't clear. He's saying, I'm waiting for God or I'm not waiting for God. Tom Alomar, so then the Pazik says, Even until I die, even when I die, I will not remove my the faith from me, meaning to say, I'll never stop believing. So this teaches us that Job served out of love. He served Hashem out of love. Rashi says, He did it out of his great love from God. So Rabbi Yeshua said, I wish uh, that the earth would be removed from your eyes. Rabbi Yohan Zakai. You said every day that Hashem served that that you have served Hashem only from fear, as it says, Ishtam Yashar Kim Visar Meira. You said every day that Job served only out of fear. Valo Yoshua Talmud, Talmud Joshua, who is the student of your student, as Rashi explains, he was a student of Rabbi Akiva, Rama Chame Ava Asu, that he served God out of love. So what's the prayer here? Before Earlier, when Rabbi Yeshua says that he prayed that you, the earth be removed from your eyes, he's saying, you thought that they got worse. You thought that they were that they would come along and make a leniency. But here he's saying, you, you didn't realize their greatness. You thought that Job served out of fear. But now you're learning that he serves God out of love. So he prays that he be resurrected just to see just how much love there was in his descendants. And so... To me, moving that this is what we study on Yom Hazikaron, the day that the Jewish people set aside to study, to remember those who died on Al Kiddush Hashem in service to the land of Israel. 
near on this day, the daf is telling us, me yagleh afar me necha, how how we pray that the that the um, that the earth will be removed from your eyes. Okay, then the Shema should all have an aliyah. Take care.